Hey, what is happening, you sweaty swablu? Temporal Forces is almost here. That means it's time for my complete set review and buy list breakdown. Speaking of Temporal Forces, if y'all looking to pick up some products, then go check out GameGradSLC.com. They've got you more than covered on that. Link, of course, will be in the description, and you can use code AzulGG to get yourself a discount over there as well. So what are you waiting for? Go pick up your Temporal Forces product from GameGrid. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. So I'm gonna go over more cards that are on my buy list and I'll give you the rationale for what count I give each of the cards I do have on my buy list and talk about those a little bit more in depth on that. Um, but yeah, the first thing we got up here is the Rabska. Uh, where's it at? <laughs> okay, no, first thing we'll talk about is Torterra actually. Torterra comes out first here. So let's talk about Torterra, Turtwig, Grottle. Of course, there is a better, better Grottle. There's a stage one Grottle that searches your deck for a grass Pokemon, which is really, really dope. This did not make my buy list, but it was close. I do think Torterra has potential, but not quite enough potential to make my buy list. But it's got some pretty big numbers here. The 340 HP, the, the, the attack force march for a grass energy. You do 30 times the amount of grass Pokemon you have in play. So if you only have grass Pokemon in play, you're hitting for 180. That one hit KOs Charizard, that two hit KOs everything in the format. One at killing most one prize Pokemon, if not all one prize Pokemon. Like I said, there's a better Grotto. There's a Grotto we have right now with the ability to search your deck for a grass Pokemon. Definitely way better than this Grotto. This Grotto sucks. The problem for consistency um, probably will be the Turtwig. Uh, this Turtwig does not have 70 HP, which means you can't Buddy Buddy Poffin for this Turtwig. And none of the other Turtwigs have 70 HP. They all have 80 HP. They were excluded from the Buddy Buddy Poffin party, and Turtwig is not happy about it. But the Solid Shell Turtwig is pretty cool. Because even though it has 30 HP, it does have the Solid Shell, which reduces the damage it takes from attacks by 20, which means you can't be sniped by Radiant Greninja's Moonlight Shrukin. So that's actually kind of cool for the Turtwig to have that, but not cool enough. Uh, I'd rather have it have 70 HP, to be honest. It's not cooler than having 70 HP, unfortunately. If it had Solid Shell for minus 30 and 70 HP, that would be insane, but not quite. So yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not too overly enthusiastic about Torterra EX. Charizard, even though it's weak to grass, it does play Radiant Charizard and can easily play other fire Pokemon like Entei or the Gouging Fire. Um, and there's even stuff like Chi and Pao in the format that does just one hit KO you as well. So I don't think having a ton of HP is very good in the current format. And I don't think moving forward is gonna be that good either. So Torterra does not quite make my buy list, but it's definitely gonna be a ton of fun to try out when the set drops, no matter what. And to go with it is this Whimsicott, which I guess maybe has more potential than the Torterra overall. Once again, did not make my buy, buy list. The Whimsicott's ability, once on your turn when you play this Pokemon to evolve one of your Pokemon, you may use this ability, heal all damage from your active grass Pokemon. If you do, discard all energy from that Pokemon. Obviously, it's going to synergize it super, super well with the Torterra because its first attack only takes one grass energy. So you have a grass on there, you heal it with Whimsicott, and then you attach a grass, and then you're attacking again. You could even like Turo this thing, and that's really, really good. And like I mentioned, the Grottle that has the ability to search your deck for a grass Pokemon, synergizes super well with the Whimsicott. You have the Cottony on your bench, chilling. Your opponent hits you. They maybe judge you or Iono you, but they could use the Grottle to find the Whimsicott pretty much no matter what and get that big heal on your Torterra. So it's going to be a super sick deck in general, just I don't think very competitive. Uh, the first competitive card we should be hitting here next is the... Oh, I guess I'll talk about the Bramble Gas real fast. Nah, Bramble Gas ain't it. We're going to skip the Bramble Gas. I, I changed my mind. The Rabska is the first competitive Pokemon we're going to talk about. It's a stage one Pokemon. Its ability to prevent all damage from and effects of attacks done to your bench Pokemon by attacks from your opponent's Pokemon. So this is basically Manaphy and Jirachi combined into one, but it's even better because Jirachi only prevents the placement of damage counters from basic Pokemon of your opponents onto your bench Pokemon. Whereas the Rabska prevents all effects of attack. So this stops stuff like TMD Evolution or any evolved Pokemon from placing damage counter on your bench Pokemon like the Miss Magus or whatever with the spread attack. So it's a Manaphy, it's a better Jirachi in one card, but it is a stage one, but I don't think that disqualifies it from making the buy list. So I have a 2-2 of this on my buy list. By the way, the buy list will be in the description down below if you just want the full buy list. Um, and I do go maybe a little overboard when I do like the Arise Out cards competitively like are you ever going to play a 2-2 Rabska in decks? Maybe not, but if a deck like only loses to damage spread through damage placement or damage sniping, then a deck could definitely play like a 2-2 Rabska to make sure you don't prize any of the pieces. So yeah, on my buy list, 2-2 Rabska. Another two of on my buy list is the Iron Leaves EX. One of the more powerful EXs coming out of the set for sure because Charizard is so good and Charizard is weak to grass. The Iron Leaves EX with the rapid ability once during your turn when you play this pokemon from your hand or to your bench you may switch this pokemon with your active pokemon and if you do you may move any number of energy from your bench pokemon to this pokemon as well and then for grass grass colors 180 damage can't attack during your next turn and conveniently this one hit ko's the charizard ex which seems to be the most popular deck in the temporal forces rotation format so that yeah, makes iron leaves a pretty good card as well and it's made it as a two of 
onto my buy list for that reason. A lot of decks play one right now, but I could definitely see a deck trying to take advantage of two of these to be able to defeat Charizard. So two of the Iron Leaves EX on my bus. I could even see decks playing three of these, to be honest. Like if it's just like boom, 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 KO Charizard, KO Charizard, KO Charizard. That probably wouldn't happen though, because char after the second Charizard goes down, you just attack with a Radiant Charizard. So two Iron Leaves is probably more than enough. You have to figure out a different way to get your last two prize cards, because if there's no Charizard EX in play, there's no two prize in play, weak to grass, most likely, but maybe boss KO the Pidgeot with something else. Who knows? Yeah, definitely two of those making their way onto the buy list. Up next, we have the Incineroar, another EX Pokemon, Stage 2, that did not make it onto my buy list, is the Incineroar EX. Now, I will mention uh, for this for this card, I actually remember, I forget the sets, but there's a better Litten. There's a Litten out there that for 2 Fire Energy does 20 damage times the number of damage counters on your Pokemon. And there's a Toracat that for 2 Fire Energy as well does 40 damage. And then if you have full HP and will be knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack, you don't get knocked out and you have 10 HP left. So both of those are better inclusions in the Incineroar deck. Now the Incineroar itself has 320 HP and then its ability attacks used by this Pokemon cost one colorless less for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. And then for fire, colorless, 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 it does 240 damage and your opponent's active is now burned. So effectively 260 damage, the potential for 280 damage on the swing back. And you can combo this with the new Relicanth in the set, like I said, to take advantage of the Toracat's attacks and the Litten's attacks, but not this Litten and not this Toracat. There's a better Toracat and there's a better Litten. So just so you know that those exist, they do exist. And if you're gonna make a Incineroar EX deck, you probably wanna include those over the ones coming out in Temporal Forces. Like I said, I don't remember exactly what sets they come from, but yeah, Incineroar, I don't think it's gonna be quite powerful enough. So it did not quite make my buy list, but just like Torterra, it's right there. And if Torterra or Incineroar become meta decks, I would not be overly surprised as well. Just my judgment of them, of their of their power as a Pokemon card is just not quite there. It's very close though. It is very close. It is very close. It's almost there. It's almost there. They're definitely pretty strong cards overall, especially in comparison to the general card pool. Up next, Gouging Fire EX, 230 HP, a Fire and a Colas for 60 damage, and then Fire Fire Colas, 260 damage. This Pokemon can't use Exploding Flare until it leaves the active spot. So a little bit interesting wording on the effect of the attack. Usually it's you can't attack during your next turn. This one goes a little bit further and you just can't attack until it leaves the active spot. So it has to leave the active spot. You can't just wait a turn to attack with us again. Now I included this as a one of on my buy list. It's a really, really good tech in Charizard to overcome the Vulpix V-Star and just to hit Arceus and uh, or V-Star decks in general with a choice belt really hard. So a good potential inclusion as a one of in Charizard makes it a one of on my buy list. For alligator, although I think it's really cool, once again, another card, stage two cards, all these stage twos that aren't making my buy list. Did not make the buy list, but we'll go ahead and talk about for alligator anyways. 180 HP, the torrent heart ability. Once during your turn, you may put five damage counters on this Pokemon. If you do, this Pokemon's attacks do 120 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon during this turn. And then for water, water, it does 160 damage. During your next turn, this Pokemon can't use great wave so combo this with neo upper energy potentially definitely reversal energy and you're doing 280 damage which is quite a bit 280 is not bad not quite getting the big one hit ko's on stuff like the charizard but we're definitely KOing stuff like the arceus v-star the giratina v-star stuff like that we're getting that ko on and with the reversal energy we can do a single attachment to actually get that attack pulled off and maybe we include the neo upper, ener upper energy in here as well once again it looks like a cool fun stage two deck but i don't think it's going to quite be competitive but it's going to be another deck that i'm excited to try out to be honest i'm excited for the frog i'm excited for the incineroar excited for the torterra honestly it seems like there's a lot of just cool decks to come out of temporal forces even if they're not competitive i mean just cool pokemon decks is cool right it doesn't matter how good they are sometimes as long as they're cool that's sometimes all that matters for sure uh, up next, I have the Walking Wake, also as a one of on my buy list, because I think it could be included in Ancient Decks as a Shred Attacker. Um, the Cerulean Pulse for the ability, damage from this Pokemon's attacks is not affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. So it's a Shred in the ability for its attacks, which means you could like attach like a Crisis Punch to the Walking Wake, and then use that 280 damage attack from the Crisis Punch, and it would gain Shred which would be interesting. Uh, and then it's attack for water colors. Colors 120. If your opponent's active Pokemon is affected by special conditions, this attack does 120 more damage. So theoretically, you get the, the Brute Bonnet involved. Maybe, um, if not for just water double colors, you're doing 120 shredded with the ability. I like the idea of it as a potential one of in, in Ancient Decks. It just kind of depends on what you need to be beating um, and what your Ancient Deck looks like. So yeah, I think stocking up on this as a one of makes sense just because having shred as an option in like a box type deck, like an Ancient Box, seems pretty good to me. I do believe the Coridon, the baby Coridon also has Shred, but sometimes you want something with a little bit more HP as well. So include that one uh, as a one of as well. Moving along though, we're into the Psychic Pokemon right now. I got the, 
I don't know how to pronounce this Pokemon's name, to be honest. Now, the reason I'm including this on the buy list as a two of uh, is because I'm including the evolution of this Pokemon, the EX evolution of this Pokemon as a two of as well. Uh, but there is a better version of this Pokemon. The best one of this Pokemon comes out and is in Crown Zenith. There is a giraffe that has a double draw attack for one colorless energy. You draw two cards, still has 90 HP and one retreat cost, but it does rotate before this one does. This one rotates uh, in the H block. I believe the other one rotates in like F block or something. So I would still stock up on two of these because I do think there is the potential for its evolution EX to be good. And But if it's not good for a rotation or two from now, you're going to want to have two of this giraffe as well as the other giraffe depending on when it is good. So yeah, I have two of these on my buy list as well for that reason. Uh, the Bronzor is kind of the same reason. This is not the best Bronzor right now. The best Bronzor is in Astral Radiance. It's 60 HP, one retreat cost, and then for... I think it actually might just be it. His attack is pretty bad. It costs metal energy as well. But 60 HP, a little bit lower of HP. So if you did want the extra HP, you could play the 8 HP one instead. But the one retreat cost is pretty attractive. So I would say that is probably the better Bronzor right now. But just like the Giraffe, uh, the other one does rotate before this Bronzor. Um, so for that reason, I would pick up for this Bronzor. And it combos, of course, with the Bronzong in the set, which I think also if there's a deck built around the Bronzong, it would involve four of them. So these are both a 4-4 on my buy list but like i mentioned for right now there's definitely better bronzors i think unless the adhp is relevant then i guess you would go with this one but yeah, the bronzong has a pretty interesting attack here for a psychic energy 30 damage your opponent can't put play any pokemon from their hand to evolve their pokemon during their next turn and this includes rare candy the only thing that actually gets around this attack to evolve pokemon would be the tm evolution which would be a good counter to this but not that many evolution decks actually play tm evolution so i think there is potential for the bronzong to be honest there's also a supporter coming out in this set that allows you to evolve non-ability pokemon on your first turn or the turn they're put into play. So theoretically, you could go second and turn one bronze on your opponent. That's not bad. That's pretty annoying. That's kind of, yeah, that's annoying. So this could be good. I actually think there's potential for Bronzong. It might not be immediately, but this is a card I look at and read. I'm like, there could be some crazy evolution lock deck that just ends up being good when the meta is just right. So that's why I got the bronze or Bronzong as a 4-4 on my buy list. Keep cruising here, getting through some of it all right we get to the flutter main finally with the fluttering dusk ability did make the buy list as well and i do this have this down as a four of because it is possible that you'd want to include more than one of these a lot of decks right now are including one there is potentially some merit to including two of these now this is a good card against lost zone decks in particular because of its fluttering dusk ability as long as this pokemon is in the active spot your opponent's active pokemon has no ability so this sh shuts down Klefki, it also shuts down Cramorant for early game attacks. And then for Colors, 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 you do 90 damage and put two damage counters on your opponent's best Pokemon in any way, any way you like. So any deck you include this with, include this in, you could probably attack with it as well because its attack costs Colors, Colors, Colors. I haven't seen this a lot in Charizard decks over in Japan, and it really just depends on how popular Lost Zone is and how badly you feel like you need to shut Lost Zone decks down. And actually, a lot of Lost Zone decks have started including, from what I've seen, the Iron Bundle. Because Iron Bundle is an ability that activates on your bench, so it doesn't get shut down by the Flutter Main. So you're able to utilize that to push the Flutter Main out of the active. So if you're really trying to shut down Lost Zone decks, you definitely want to, want to include more than one Flutter Main. And just like we saw some Clef Key decks do a format or two ago, you'd maybe want to include up to four Flutter Main to really shut Lost Zone decks down. You open with it, you have an extra one on your bench. Yeah, the Lost Zone deck is just completely boxed out. And then you start attacking with the Flying Curse until they can finally deal with it. And at that point, you're probably so far ahead or so set up that they can't actually make a comeback. So yeah, I got four of on the Flutter Main on the buy list as well. Up next, we got the Iron Crown EX, which is currently being included as like a three of four of in the future hands deck. But I think in future future decks, we could see it be included as a four of in other ways as well. So I definitely would pick up four of the Iron Crown if you have any plans to ever play a future deck got that cobalt commander ability your future pokemon's attacks do 20 more damage to your opponent's active pokemon and then the twin i don't know how to say that colors psychic psychic or psychic colors colors you do 50 damage to two of your opponent's pokemon this damage isn't affected by weakness resistance or by any effects on uh those pokemon so like theoretically you could like get through manaphy with this attack basically you could like do 50 damage to two bench pokemon even if they have a manaphy on the bench so it's kind of cool for that it's really just there for the ability to boost your future pokemon's uh, future Pokemon's attacks damage by that 20. Um, and for each one in play, you boost it by 20 more. So you could be doing like plus 80 damage, which can be a big difference maker when you're trying to take bigger one-hit KOs on like Arceus V-Stars and stuff like that with like an Iron Hand. So pretty good card. Recommend picking up four if you plan for the future. Up next, we got the Relicanth. 100 HP. The ability, like I said, this combos with the Incineroar deck, but I think this deck, this card has a ton of potential in the future in probably a ton of different ways. Each of your evolved Pokemon can use any attacks from its previous evolutions 
you still need the necessary energy to use the attack. Now, this makes my buy list as a two of, because I think if any deck is super reliant on this card, you definitely want to play two of them. You don't want to rely too heavily on Heavy Ball. Also, because if it is such a big part of your deck, it's going to be gusted up and KO'd pretty aggressively. So you don't want to have to recover this through Super Rod and like find a Nest Ball to be able to utilize it again. It'd be nice to just have a second one in your deck, probably for quite a few decks that would actually play this card. So Relicanth makes it as a two of onto the buy list. The Drill Burr also makes it to a two of on the buy list because it's got a really interesting ability. When you play this Pokemon for your hand onto your bench, during your turn, you may search your deck for up to three basic fighting energy and discard them then shuffle your deck i think it's just a really interesting ability and any deck that's trying to aggressively utilize the drill bar would probably play too so you don't prize it and you can aggressively get it put it into play and utilize its ability so drill bar makes my buy list as a two of i have no idea what deck you could possibly play this in immediately but the ability is so unique and potentially powerful yeah who knows something in the future might just combo with this really really well so i got the drill bar as a two of on my buy list for that reason extra drill did not make it and nor are we gonna even stop and talk about the extra drill we're going right on past that don't need to look at it we're going to come up to the Great Tusk. Made my buy list as a four of, because of course, if you want to play the mill deck, you need four of these. Crust Collapse for Colors. Colors, discard the top card of your opponent's deck. If you played an Ancient Supporter card from your hand during this turn, discard three more cards from the top of their deck. Yeah, the Great Tusk is definitely to be feared. Coming up in Temporal Force, we've already seen some success of it. In Japan, it got top 16 at their most recent Champions League, and I'm super excited for the Great Tusk. It combos with Double Turbo Energy and the new Explorer's Guidance card that we'll talk about here in a second. Of course, we all know what Double Turbo Energy does, but yeah, Great Tusk makes it to the buy list as a four of, and I'm super excited for the return of Mill. This is maybe the deck that I'm most excited to try out when uh, Temporal Forces drops on PTCG Live in a couple weeks. Uh, the Sandy Shocks, now we did kind of get a better one prize Ancient Attacker. I still think there is some potential merit to a Sandy Shocks, in an ancient deck where you're not able to put down as many ancient Pokemon. So even though we do get the Coridon, ancient Coridon in the set, I still think Shandy Shocks, Sandy Shocks is still worth picking up at a rate of, or at a two of on my buy list uh, with the Magnetic Blast. 20 damage plus 70 more damage if you have at least three energy in play. Like I said, Coridon is also very good, but I could see the Sandy Shocks being worth uh, worth picking up as well. So it did make my it did make its way onto my buy list as a two of. Uh, the Iron Boulder EX, I was not going to include on my buy list because I think this card is terrible. However, it is being played over in Japan in the future hands deck as a tech card for the Mirror match as well as a card for the Arceus matchups as well. So it's got the Axe attack here for a fighting on Colorless. Does 60 damage. If this Pokemon takes any damage from an attack during your post-next turn, put 8 damage charge on the attacking Pokemon. But we do have the Iron Crowns. So once you get some Iron Crowns involved... You're looking at potentially three iron crowns you're doing 120 damage uh, and that will already ko's uh, an iron hands an opposing iron hands and then if you get a future capsule on here as well or the fourth iron crown in play you're looking at 140 damage which ko's arceus so yeah pretty interesting tech card to take advantage of the fighting type weakness in future decks so put this as a two of on my buy list as well i wasn't initially going to include it but when I was going over my buy list with my chat, they were like, yeah, is it being played in list in Japan as like a tech card? I was like, yeah, that kind of makes sense. If it gets the KO, it gets the KO. So yeah, why wouldn't you have some of these around to potentially tech in for certain matchups? Uh, I put the Ekans in here in my buy list as well. It just is the best Ekans. The other Ekans has 70 HP, but has two retreat costs, which is really, really awkward. So yeah, this 60 HP, one retreat cost Ekans also made it to my buy list as a four of, because if Arbok has potential, you're going to want the right Ekans. And I think this Ekans is far superior to the other Ekans. So Ekans made it to my buy list as a four of just for that reason. Um, we'll keep cruising here. Uh, Sableye made it to my buy list as a one of it's a pretty cute attack with the damage collector for two colorless. Move any damage counters from your opponent's bench Pokemon to the to their active Pokemon. So theoretically, you could like punch something pretty hard and then you could then maybe your opponent switches into a new Pokemon or they're like running around a lot. You can like bring all the damage together and place it on your opponent's active. I don't know. This just seems like it has a decent amount of potential. I'm not sure for sure where the what this should be played with. Maybe with like the Miss Mages deck, this could be used as a tech card. Or I don't know, like if you're just like punching a bunch of Arceuses in a row and they keep retreating between Arceus, you can use this at the end of the game to like pull all the damage together and take a knockout. I just got a unique attack, and usually unique attacks like this do eventually find their way into some deck for some matchup. Just kind of kind of give it time. And it'll get there eventually. So these are the kind of cards I like to just have on hand as a one of, because you never really know once you're tested a matchup, all of a sudden you realize, wait, that Sableye's attack here would be sick at this end game or something, or in the mid game, whatever it might be consistently in a matchup. You're like, Sableye's going in the deck. So pick it up as a one of on my buy list. Here's the giraffe stage one EX Pokemon. 
Prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from your opponent's basic Pokemon EX. Super powerful ability. Insanely powerful ability. It's got the sneaky beam for a colorless psychic psychic. Wait, Psychic, Colorless, Colorless, 160, this attack does 30 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So insane ability, the attack's kind of whatever, but if your opponent can't attack you, that's pretty good. So like something like the Future Hands deck, I don't think has a great answer to something like the Giraffe here. Uh, they do have the Baby Maridon, but that's not quite like one hit KO in your anything like that, anything like that. And I don't think it's quite getting to like a two hit KO. Uh, maybe if they have like four of the Iron Crown in play, they could be two hit KO in you, but maybe you get some kind of healing involved or something like that. And your giraffe is surviving for three or four turns, run them out of the baby Maridons. And at that point, their hands can't hit you, their crowns can't hit you. So yeah, I do really like this card as like a potential tech for specific matchups like that Iron Hands matchup potentially. So I have this as a two of them on my buy list. Like I already talked about the baby giraffe. This is the big giraffe. There's a better baby giraffe, but when that baby giraffe rotates, this baby giraffe is the better baby giraffe. So I put two of these on my buy list as well. Four Roaring Moon made the buy list as well. Of course, this is gonna be the ancient box deck. Has already seen some decent success in Japan. Like I said, top 16 for this one as well in the Champions League. It's got the Dark Dark for 70 plus 10 more damage for each ancient card in your discard pile. So ancient one prize type deck you get this in there you get the new Coridon that we'll talk about here in a second in there and uh, you're hitting for two hit KOs pretty soon and then at some point you actually start to hit for one hit KOs on stuff like Arceus V-Stars uh, depending on how many ancient cards you actually play in the deck but it does play quite a few ancient cards the Sadas um, the Sadas your attackers your Pokemon stuff like that you got quite a few ancient cards in there the uh, tool cards as well so you build up the numbers pretty fast so need four of these for the ancient box for sure uh, up next, we got the Matang. Uh, so there's this Beldum here, 70 HP. It has one or three costs as well, but there is a better Matang, I think, or better Beldum, excuse me. This is the best Matang by far, but the Beldum real fast. The better Beldum is in Silver Tempest, 60 HP. It has an attack for a colorless energy that searches your deck for a card and then puts it on top of your deck. I think it's a little bit better than this one. This one does have more HP, so it's possible you'd want to have the 70 HP or over the 60 HP. I guess one of the things would be like how popular is Sableye maybe, but yeah, the other Beldum does seem a little bit better, uh, but just like all the other basics I've been talking about up to this point, it does rotate before Matang rotates. So we won't have access to the better Beldum for as long as Matang's in the standard format. So I do have four of this Beldum on my buy list as well, but currently there is a better one. For the Matang 100 HP Metal Maker, once in your turn, you may look at the top four cards of your deck, choose as many basic metal energy you find there and attach them to your Pokemon anyway you like, shuffle the other cards and put them on the bottom of your deck. So this last part of the ability is really important because it means chaining Matangs in a row will lead to higher success rates of finding metal energy, which is a really cool added effect to the ability. The fact that it doesn't shuffle the cards back into the deck, really, really cool, increasing your odds of hitting those metal energy if you have two or three Matang that you're utilizing in a single turn. So yeah, this is a really good energy acceleration for metal Pokemon. Uh, I think it's definitely worth picking up. If it's not good right now, definitely possible that we get some metal Pokemon in the future that combo really, really well with the Matang and it uh, becomes a powerful card to have around. So Matang makes it four of, and because Matang is a card we're picking up, I figured might as well pick up a single Metagross. So I have a single Metagross on my buy list. For Metal Colors, 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 you do 200 damage, discard two energy from this Pokemon. Eh. And then for Meteor Smash for one Metal, 60, and then you do 60 more if you use Meteor Smash during your next turn. Seems okay. I mean, if we're picking up four Matang, may as well pick up one Metagross. So Metagross made by Buy List as a one of. Uh, the Iron Treads made by Buy List as a two of. Same reason for the other future Pokemon I put on here, the uh, Iron Boulder. The Iron Treads made it on here for the same reason. While this Pokemon has a future capsule attached to it, it is both fighting and metal type. Metal pretty good for KO and Chi and Pals. Fighting, pretty good for KO and Iron Hands. So potentially a cool tech Pokemon to include in your future deck. So two of this made it to my buy list as well. And for Metal Colors, it does 60 damage. Move one energy from this Pokemon to one of your bench Pokemon. 60 damage plus three Iron Crowns becomes 120. Plus a fourth Iron Crown becomes 140. Plus, <laughs> plus a, uh, what is it? Future Capsule becomes 160. If they got weakness, that's 320 damage. That's one hit KO in most things in the format that are weak to Metal or weak to fighting. And sometimes you don't have to have that many damage modifiers to get some chaos on stuff, like I said, like a Chi and Pao, like an Arceus V-Star. Yeah, the Iron Treads seems like a cute potential inclusion to take advantage of weakness in the future deck. Here's that Ancient Coridon. Finally, like I said, I still like the idea of picking up a Sandy Shocks or two to have around for Ancient decks, but the Coridon is kind of the shining star of the Ancient One Prizers, to be honest. Uh, for a fighting and calls, it does 30 damage times the amount of ancient Pokemon in play. So itself is already included in that, which means you do 30 damage. So you have two other ancient Pokemon on your bench. You are swinging for 90 damage. So the only difference between this 
and the Sandy Shocks at that point is that if you have a, another Ancient Pokemon in play, you're in for 120, which is just better. But this does take two energy to attack with, but the Sandy Shocks does require three energy to be in play, um, even if it's including the energy on itself. So you could just make one of those energy be on a Coridon instead. Coridon also has more HP, and it does have a Shred Attack. For Firefighting Colorless, you do 130. This attack's damage isn't affected by any effect on your opponent's active Pokemon. So the Coridon definitely has a pretty strong argument that it's better than the Sandy Shocks as like a one prize Ancient card. But like I said, I like to have the full arsenal at my disposal, so I'd recommend picking up both. But the Coridon is something you'd want to pick up as a four of if you're interested in playing with that Ancient Box. Comboed with the Roaring Moon, playing four of each of those. Um, is the way most ancient box looks like they're being being built. So you have two different attackers. The Coridon is definitely a more aggressive attacker in the early game. Build your bench with ancient Pokemon. You can be hitting for, you know, 180 damage potentially. Uh, the Coridon EX, I actually added this to my buy list as well as kind of a, I don't know, a potential for Lost Zone decks. It does attack for Fighting Fighting Fire, which in the current landscape of Lost Zone options is not great, but it is 280 damage which is a lot of damage. 280 is a lot. <laughs> now you do hit yourself for 60 damage, but you're already like only a 230 HP two prize Pokemon anyway, which gets KO'd by most things once they get set up. So yeah, I don't know if hitting yourself uh, for the 60 damage is gonna make that big of a difference, to be honest. But yeah, 280, even if it is for firefighting, fighting, you know, if you're playing a loss zone deck that is mainly built around fighting energy, um, and that's like your heavy count of energy, then you Mirage Gate for a fighting and a fire, you attach your fighting for turn, and then you do a 280. That doesn't sound terrible, to be honest. Now. Is it immediately in Lost Zone's future? I don't know, but the numbers are there. The two two prize basic Pokemon. We've seen a ton of those have a tons of value in Lost Box decks. So I put this as a two of on my buy list because I think it's got that potential. Um, and another one that has that potential. We'll skip past, past the Baby Maridon here for a second. The another one that I think has that potential in a potential Lost Zone deck is the Maridon EX for kind of the same reason. It hits pretty hard. Uh, for that kind of uh, more convenient energy cost, though. For a Lightning Psychic Colorless, you're probably already playing a Psychics for Sableye. Then you just have to be including Lightning Energy. And then the Colorless is also like a big plus, to be honest. He just has like a heavy hitter in a Lost Zone deck. Once again, off the rip, when this set first drops, will, be th will this be included in Lost Zone decks immediately? I don't know. But I think it is a cool a cool option to potentially include, you know, depending on how Lost Zone decks develop. Like, if you can build a Lost Zone deck just, just around Psychic and Lightning Energy, then this all of a sudden becomes a pretty cool inclusion uh, as it does hit pretty hard um, on the as a two-prize Pokemon. Like, we see stuff like Dragonite, Roaring Moon, all that kind of stuff has been included in Lost Box decks. So I don't see a reason why potentially this Maridon or this Coridon couldn't also make their way into a Lost Zone deck at some point. So both of these make it as a two of onto my buy list for that reason. Got some Lost Box potential. Uh, the Maridon here, the Baby Maridon, is a big player in the future decks, of course, with that speed peak for a colorless energy. You do 40 damage, search your deck for up to two basic energy and attach them to your future Pokemon any way you like. So this made as a four of onto my buy list. Super powerful card in the future decks and is already being played at a count of like two in the future hands decks. Where will the future decks go from here? Who knows? We're definitely going to be having some more future and ancient cards coming out, I think, over the next couple sets would be my guess. So more potential for different kinds of future decks moving forward. And this card will probably be a big part of quite a few of them. The energy acceleration is kind of just unmatched in the current format, it feels like. Especially if we're doing 40 damage, get an Iron Crown or two in play, and you're also like KOing their Charmander or Ralts or something for the turn, as well as, as well as as well as well accelerating those two energy into play. So yeah, pretty good card. The Raging Bolt did not make my buy list. I don't think Raging Bolt is very good at all. It's a cool deck. Actually, I think this looks like way less fun than something like an Incineroar or a Torterra, and it did not make my buy list at all. I think it's a two prize Pokemon that one hit KOs your opponent's active, and we have seen a ton of those in the past. They've always been okay, but in a format where it's not solely based around just KOing your opponent's other two prize Pokemon, Raging Bolt, I think, comes up a little bit short. I don't think it's good. When you have stuff like Charizard and Gardevoir and even like Lugia running around that have like powerful one prize attackers to potentially take advantage of, the Radiant Charizard, the Chinchino, the Drifloon, like, Two prize Pokemon like Raging Bolt that can just basically only one hit KO your opponent's active, I don't think are very good. So yeah, Raging Bolt did not make my buy list. And I actually think I'd even like put more stock into potentially something like the Incineroar or the Torterra over the Raging Bolt because yeah, we've seen it before, we're seeing it again, and I don't think it's going to change. I don't think something like the Raging Bolt is that powerful. So yeah, Raging Bolt does not make my buy list at all. And I'm not very enthusiastic about it either. Like I'm, I'm hype for, <laughs> I'm hype for Incineroar. I'm hype for Torterra. I am not hype at all for Raging Bolt. I hate Raging Bolt. Up next to Dunsparce and the Dunsparce. I'll mention the Dunsparce real fast. Like I mentioned with some of the other 
basic Pokemon. This Dunsparce, I think, is the best Dunsparce. It has free retreat. The other Dunsparce doesn't. It's closed. The Dunsparce is a potentially interesting draw engine here. 140 HP dashing draw. Once in your turn, you may draw three cards. If you do, shuffle this Pokemon all cards attached to it into your deck. So that's just kind of cool and interesting, to be honest. Yeah, the Dunsparce could be a pretty cool draw engine, especially after B-Barrel rotates. This is where I could see the Dunsparce coming into play and being a pretty powerful card moving forward. So yeah, the, the Dunsparce, Dunsparce line is a 4-4. Four, four. four Dunsparce and four Dunsparce on my buy list for that reason, because it does seem like you'd probably include this as like a 3-3 three, three or a 4-4 four, four in any deck that actually played it. So yeah, 4-4 four, four on the Dun and the Dunsparce. Moving along, I did chat add chat out as well to my buy list. It's got a call for family attack, the Cullis, the Acapella, search your deck for three basic Pokemon and put them on your bench and shuffle your deck. Got potential so yeah three chat or four chat hot made it to my buy list as well uh, the p dove also made it to my buy list as a four of because it's got an insanely powerful ability this this ability is like actually ridiculous once in your turn if this pokemon's remaining hp is 30 or less it does have 50 hp we do have stuff like the bog as well as there's a stadium in the format that says when you attach an energy to your pokemon and it's not a water pokemon it takes 20 damage i believe I'm not misremembering that, right? That exists, right? And we have Bog, which says when you put a basic Pokemon from your hand onto your bench, you also put 20 damage on it. So combo that with this ability. If it has 30 or HP or less, which it will after you put 20 damage on it, you may search your deck for an Unpheasant or Unpheasant EX and put it onto this Pokemon to evolve it, then shuffle your deck. Now, there is a couple Unpheasant in the format, or there's a Unpheasant in the format, or will be. There's one coming out in Temporal Forces. There is no Unpheasant EX in the format. So this suggests that there is going to eventually be an Unpheasant EX. With that in mind, p -Dove made it onto my buy list as a 4 of because it's a really powerful ability. And if this Unpheasant EX is decent, this could be a pretty powerful deck, to be honest. Now, I don't think there's ever been a good Unpheasant deck in the past, but it's about time. So get your p -Doves before they spike. Uh, and then I did put the Unpheasant as a 2 of on my buy list as well. In preparation for a good Unpheasant EX, Does it, is it going to happen? Who knows? But best to be prepared. Got the reverse win for Ducala 70, 70 damage. You may put 2 energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon into their hand. That sounds really good against Charizard, to be honest. Imagine you're a Charizard player. You load up two energy on your Charizard, you attack, and your opponent goes, all right, put them back in your hand. That would suck. <laughs> that would really suck. And then 180 for triple colorless uh, during your next turn, this Pokemon can't attack. So this made it as a two of, because the Unpheasant is real. Then we're going to want uh, this Unpheasant as well. Because that first attack is pretty chill. The second attack is pretty chill. The question is, is how good is that Unpheasant EX going to be? I got no clue. Got the Minchino here. So I made a note about this Minchino. The best Minchino... Is from Brilliant Stars. It has Call for Family. Uh, but that Minchino does rotate before Chinchino rotates. The thing with the Chinchino, though, this one is a little bit, like, different than the other basics I've mentioned so far, is Lugia also rotates when the good Minchino rotates. Uh, and then we still have the Chinchino. So if Chinchino is still good after Lugia rotates, which I don't know if it will be, you're going to want this Minchino. But also, Chinchino might just be bad when Lugia rotates. But Chinchino is going to be pretty good with Lugia. We've already seen it have a ton of success over in Japan because it won the first Champions League over there. Special roll for two colorless energies. It attacks a 70 damage for each special energy card attached to this Pokemon. Combo that with Lugia. Get the Archaeops in play. You can, be doing, you can be doing 350 damage with this special roll on turn two, potentially. Pretty easily on turn three. Want to carry everything in the format, and you can set them up back to back to back and just take big knockout after big knockout after big knockout. Yeah, Chinchino's pretty crazy with Lugia right now. Like I said, there's a better Minchino. Chinchino does survive the rotation after that Minchino rotates, but Lugia also leaves. So, yeah, I got the Chinchino Minchino as a 4 4 on my buy list, but I don't know if Chinchino will actually be good after Lugia rotates, to be honest. I mean, special energy will still be around, but will we really have special energy acceleration like there is currently? on uh archaeops i don't know <laughs> getting to the trainer cards the ancient capsule is a reprint of course we got the awakening drum so all the trainer cards i'll just go over real fast for the buy list uh this is how i just do buy lists in general with trainer cards uh four of everything except for a specs a specs are one of them on my buy list and every other trainer card is a four of so awakening drum gonna be pretty powerful in ancient decks potentially but i have seen quite a few ancient decks playing the prime catcher instead um, you may draw one card for each of your ancient Pokemon in play. That's a pretty crazy draw power card in decks, to be honest. Uh, you may play as many item cards as you like, of course. But yeah, pretty crazy item card. It is a one-off because it is an A-spec. Is it better than Prime, Catch Prime Catcher is kind of the question in these ancient decks, especially like Ancient Box it seems to be the go-to ancient deck in Temporal Forces. I'm not sure if it's better than Prime Catcher, but it's definitely a powerful card. Uh, that remains to be seen if it's better or not. Bianca's Devotion, heal all damage from one of your Pokemon with 30 HP or less. 30 or less HP remaining. 
This would be a very situational card for certain matchups. Like if you just play against a matchup where they're constantly punching your active and leaving you with very little HP left and they're not able to take advantage of that very small amount of HP remaining, then Bianca's Devotion could be like a pretty cool tech one of uh, supporter for that situation. So just kind of one of those cards to keep in mind that you know exists. Uh, boxed Order, probably not a great card, but like I said, every trainer card makes it to a four of on my buy list. Um, I feel like there's no reason to not pick up every single trainer card from every single new set release. You never know when a trainer card is going to be good. And they're so much more versatile than Pokemon cards because they're not a certain type or a certain stage or attack with certain energies. They're just a trainer card. Uh, search your deck for two item cards, reveal them and put them into your hand, shuffle your deck. Your turn does end after you do that. Not great value, especially with Iono in the format, but I could see potentially playing it in some Arvin decks to go search out on your first turn and then utilize. It gets you ahead by a little bit, potentially. I don't know. Buddy Putty Puffin, of course, this is a four of, um, and you're going to want to pick this one up. Search your deck for two basic Pokemon with 70 or less HP and put them onto your bench. It's a new Battle VIP pass for decks that have a ton of Pokemon that have 70 HP or less. Four of in Charizard, four of in Gardevoir. Uh, four of and pow you name it it's there it's buddy buddy poffin uh code breaker gonna be a pretty cool card not gonna be like too heavily played but index that play b barrel or even pokestop or radiant greninja you will see the decipher maniacs or cypher maniacs code breaking search your deck for two cards put them on top of your deck in any order uh, or shuffle your deck and then put them on top of your deck in any order and then you use your b barrel you use your pokestop you use your radiant greninja draw into those cards utilize them how you want or you leave them on top of your deck so that way when your opponent iono's you during your next turn or during their next turn uh, you draw into those cards off the iono so another powerful way to potentially utilize this card as well a uh, potentially toxic trainer card here the supporter eerie i think it's a pretty cool card to be honest and uh, hopefully it doesn't get too out of hand. Actually, I just kind of like this card. Look at your opponent's hand, choose two item cards you find there and discard them. That's pretty sick. That's pretty sick. I don't know. I like this, uh, this card a lot. A lot of people are talking about how it could be a little bit too toxic. Um, if you've ever played with Getsis in the format, you probably understand what they mean a little bit. Getsis looked at your opponent's hand, took all item ca cards you found there, and I believe shuffled them into your opponent's deck or put them on the bottom of your opponent's deck. And then you drew a card for each item card you took out of their hand. But you took all item cards. Um, so it definitely felt a little bit more powerful, and you drew cards for each item card you took. Now, Eerie, you don't get to draw any cards for the item cards you disrupt from your opponent's hand, but you do force your opponent to discard them, which means on their next turn, they can't refine those item cards. They're just kind of gone. So, like, especially up against rare candy decks, imagine if you're playing up against a Charizard, or you're playing Charizard, and they Eerie you and take away two rare candy. That sucks. Yeah, that's rough. So, we'll see. I don't think it'll be too toxic, but... Uh, yeah, I, honestly, this is like a great response to like if the Charizard player goes Rotom for three and you went first as Arceus and you go, okay, sure, turn two, star birth, get Eerie, play Eerie, and then attack knock out the active. That's rough. <laughs> that could be pretty tough to deal with, to be honest. And I currently like have been liking the idea of Eerie in Arctina. So this is where uh, that card would probably be most effective immediately. Uh, Explorer's Guidance. Look at the top six cards of your deck. Put two of them into your hand. Discard the other cards. Not a great supporter, but it is in the mill deck, and the mill deck is cool. So this card is cool. Will be played in much else? I don't think so. It's pretty good in the mill deck, but besides that, I don't see this card seeing a ton of play. Because the drawback of discarding four cards is a pretty big drawback. Like You get two out of the top six, but imagine just playing a research and getting seven cards and keeping all seven cards. That's pretty good. So specifically, this will probably combo with some ancient decks, maybe outside of the Great Tusk deck, but Explorer's Guidance, pretty mid, good in the mill. Uh, full Metal Lab. Metal Pokemon, both yours and your opponents, take 30 less damage from attacks from the opponent's Pokemon. I actually think we're getting to a point where Full Metal Lab could be a pretty powerful stadium. Stadiums in general right now aren't too heavily played. So if you're playing like a four of, like a four of Full Metal Lab, it's very possible in the current format that your Full Metal Lab sticks in play for like the whole game. So yeah, stuff like Full Metal Lab are actually potentially pretty powerful in the current format, the way things are shaping up, where a lot of decks just aren't playing stadiums at all, or even vacuum counts very high, if, if any. Because playing Artisan feels a little weird now that you don't have to counter paths to the peak, because you don't really want to give your opponent access to more Pokemon search. So instead of playing Artisan, you could just play another Nest Ball, or a Great Ball, or another Ultra Ball, and just find your Pokemon, and don't let help your opponent find their Pokemon. So with a lot, so many people playing less stadium cards, there's good opportunities for passive stadiums like Full Metal Lab to actually be good. Usually passive stadiums aren't that good, uh, unless they potentially have a very powerful effect of slowing your opponent down, like Pats of the Peak, or when they do stick, they just kind of take over the game, like Pats of the Peak. Most passive stadiums are not very powerful because there's usually a decent amount of stadiums in the format that you never get to actually get value out of your stadium. But we are entering a format where stadiums definitely seem to be less played. Um, 
Future Capsule Reprint, don't need to read that. Hand Trimmer, both players discard their hand, or, or both players discard cards from the hand, they both have five cards remaining. Your opponent discards cards first. I don't know how that would actually change how what you would discard from your hand, but there should be an order to things. So your opponent discards first, potentially good in the mill deck or some kind of control deck where you're trying to like deck your opponent out. Because if your opponent's just sitting there with a massive hand, they're eventually going to Iono it all back to the deck. Before they get the Iono off, you could hit him with that hand trimmer, make them discard a couple cards. They'll still get the Iono off, but they'll have less cards in their deck after the Iono, making it more possible, easier for you to actually mill your opponent out in the end. So the hand trimmer in the Great Tusk mill deck seems like it'll be a pretty good inclusion as like a one or a two of. And in control decks moving forward, I could see this being included as well, or even maybe as an answer to control decks as well, because control decks build up a pretty big hand. Uh, they sit there, they use Rotom, they draw, they draw, they draw, they draw, they trap something of yours in the active and keep drawing cards. Maybe it's a win condition to play this as an anti-control card as well. Like you have just enough stuff to almost beat them, but not enough. But if they have less resources, then you can beat them, hit them with a hand trimmer, get the dub. You could like hit him with hand trimmer and then like play. Ooh, imagine you like the control player plays down to like one card left in deck and then you hand trimmer Iono them. So you hand trimmer them down to five. They have one card in deck and you play Iono. They put their hand on the bottom of the deck to draw their whole deck and you pass and you deck them out. That would be sick. That'd be super cool as a win condition against control. Yo, hand trimmer. The heavy baton, a super powerful tool card with the iron hands. It could be more power. It could be powerful with other Pokemon with heavy retreat cost, but currently Iron Hands loves this card. The future Iron Hands deck plays two of these. You don't really need more than two. I don't think you have a ton of tools search in the deck. And you really just need it to trigger once, maybe twice to get the value out of it to like chain your Iron Hands to actually just win the game. So if the Pokemon with the retreat cost, with the retreat cost of exactly four, this card is attached to as your active Pokemon is knocked out by damage from an attack. You may move up to three basic energy cards from that Pokemon to your bench Pokemon in any way you like. That is crazy powerful especially when it's comboed with a crazy powerful Pokemon like Iron Hands. Yeah, Heavy Baton, pretty disgusting in that deck, and uh, overall just like a solid card for any Pokemon that has exactly four retreat costs, namely right now the Iron Hands, but in the future I could see this being played in a bunch of different decks potentially. So yeah, Heavy Baton, pretty chill. There's the Hero's Cape, plus 100 HP to the Pokemon this is attached to. We see this popping up in Gardevoir, in Charizard, in Control, in Mill. The Hero's Cape seems pretty good. Yeah, pick it up. Master Ball, the A spec that probably almost no one thought would actually be good, was the first A spec to win a major tournament in Champions League, uh, in the Champions League in Japan. Played in the Lugia deck. Definitely seems good in Lugia. Will it find room? Will it find a home in many other decks? I'm not too sure to be honest, but just like all the other A specs, pick one up. You never know when it's going to be good. It is currently good in Lugia. I would say that for sure. It seems pretty good in Lugia. Past that, who knows? Seems like Lugia might be a pretty unique situation. Um, so I don't see Master Ball being played in a ton of meta decks. But, uh, I mean, it's already in Lugia. I might get there. Maximum Belt here. Do 50 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon EX. This is a crazy powerful card in Charizard and Arctina right now. Allowing you to more easily KO Charizards and Chien Pows for both of those decks. Really, really, is really, really, really helpful. So yeah, Maximum Belt, going to be crazy good moving forward. And as we progress in the format and further into the ex format there's going to be more exs less v's and v stars and maximum belt theoretically only gets better as we progress set after set after set morty's conviction i hated zinnia's resolve morty's conviction seems maybe a slight bit better but still i'm not a big fan of morty's conviction either but you never know we've already seen it pop up a little bit in lists from like city leagues in the champions league over in japan um, and as we progress it might continue to pop up in more decks moving forward you can only use this card if you discard another card from your hand. Draw a card for each of your opponent's benched Pokemon. Basically, Zinnia's Resolve, but Zinnia's Resolve drew a card for each of your opponent's Pokemon in play, so it includes the active, but you did have to discard two cards from your hand. So, if I hated Zinnia's Resolve, I don't think I'm going to like Morty's Conviction that much more. So, I'm going to go ahead and say this card is bad, but it still makes my buy list, just like every other trainer card, as a 4 of. Perilous Jungle. During Pokemon checkup, put two more damage counters on your on each poison pokemon this actually seems pretty powerful poison is a status condition that can be a little bit hard to come by right now uh, except any dark pokemon with this as well uh, but we do have the brute bonnet in the format poisons your active pokemon as long as you have the ancient uh, capsule on it you get sneezler involved and that's 50 damage in between turns from poison damage i don't know that's like kind of good that's like not bad so whether it be right now or sometime in the future i think perilous jungle definitely seems like it is a pretty powerful stadium just needs the right poison deck to work with, I guess. But yeah, plus 20 damage 
is pretty good especially if you're putting that on top of poison that's plus 30 like i said radiant sneezler gets involved that's plus 50 overall like that's a big boost to your damage potentially i don't know what this is particularly good with exactly but maybe you could like play this with like bonnet Ooh, hold up let me cook for a second here bonnet brute bonnet bonnet brute bonnet sneezler perilous jungle poison deck try it out broken prime catcher probably the best a spec in the game right now but we've seen unfair stamp i think there's a lot of cool a specs to come hopefully uh, but crime prime catcher is probably the most powerful not very cool prime catcher is not very cool unfair stamp is kind of cool switch in one of your opponent's bench pokemon to the active if you do switch one of switch your active pokemon with one of your bench pokemon it's an item gust effect that guarantees gusts it's disgusting reboot pond gonna be the future a spec of choice is what i thought but most recently, I've been seeing the future hands builds, including the Prime Catcher over the Reboot Pod. But Reboot Pod, definitely a very powerful A spec card. For each of your future Pokemon in play, choose one basic energy from your discard pile and attach it to that Pokemon. So Reboot Pod, definitely a powerful card. But it's kind of unfortunate that's being like overshadowed by Prime Catcher and future decks. Because you'd love to see this being the card that is played in the future decks. But for right now, it seems like Prime Catcher has sort of replaced it. It started out with Reboot Pods and Future Hands, and now we've kind of been getting to the Prime Catcher. But I think as Future Hands decks probably turn into more Future Box decks, we'll see them make their way back to the Reboot Pod instead. Uh, the Rescue Board here is going to be a super powerful card, specifically in Lost Zone decks initially. The uh, Pokemon this card is attached to pays one less to retreat. Yeah, it's super good on comb feet. Makes it into a pivot, a constant pivot in play at all times. Just broken. Yeah, pretty good. Salvatore, this is a supporter I was talking about earlier that can combo with the Bronzong. Search your deck for a Pokemon, accept any Pokemon with abilities that evolves from one of your Pokemon in play, and put it on that Pokemon to evolve it. Then shuffle your deck. You can use this card on a Pokemon that was put into play when setting up to play, or on the turn it was put into play. So you can go second play this on your first turn and then immediately evolve a shuppet into a bonnet and then item lock your opponent or the bronzor into the bronzong and immediately limit your opponent from being able to evolve their pokemon yeah so the salvator is pretty sick um and i'm excited to see the combos that we can come up with this um definitely very interesting supporter card unique supporter card and yeah i'm excited for cards like this cards like this i just think are really really sick so salvator is a, is a dub for sure uh, the mist energy as long as this pokemon is attached to a pokemon as long as this card is attached to a Pokemon. We're not attaching Pokemon to Pokemon out here. Sorry, it's getting late for me. It provides colorless energy. <laughs> Prevent all effects of attacks from your opponent's Pokemon done to the Pokemon this card is attached to. Existing effects are not removed. Damage is not in effect. I like how it clarifies that now. Um, especially for like newer players. Like a lot of players are confused by how like Manaphy works or if Jirachi protects from Greninja, stuff like that. But yeah, there's placing placing of damage counters, like what Sableye's Lost Mine does, and then there's doing damage, which is what like the Moonlight Shuriken from Radiant Greninja does. Radiant Greninja places nine or does 90 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon. Uh, and Sableye places 12 damage counters on the board. So Mist Energy would stop Sableye. Uh, from affecting the Pokemon is attached to, but would not stop Greninja from sniping the Pokemon that the Mist Energy is attached to. And Mist Energy can do so much more than that as well. It can shut down stuff like the Star Requiem from the Lost Tina and any other effects. Like it can stop de evolution, which is pretty, pretty cool. Uh, you can place in like your Charizard deck and put it on your Charizard or your Pidgeot to play around TM de evolution and stuff like that. So the Mist Energy, super powerful uh, special energy card here. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see powerful special energy cards like the colorless ones that where it seems like they will actually be utilized in decks a little bit more consistently because i feel like the most recent colorless special energy we've had like the medical energy and stuff are just kind of bad but mist energy definitely a very good one and we'll definitely see some play and then the only a spec i have not seen in a deck so far has been the neo upper energy i've not seen the neo upper energy in a single deck so far from all the lists that i've looked at from the results from the champions league and just japan tournaments in general and anything i've seen people tweet about on twitter zero neo upper energy yet um, Neo Up Energy provides two Rainbow Energy to the Stage 2 Pokemon it is attached to. And if it's not attached to a Stage 2 Pokemon, it just provides a colorless energy. So obviously, it doesn't seem that ridiculously powerful. And I really don't think it is compared to a lot of the other A specs, to be honest. Um, it's a little bit more niche. And I think it will. If Master Ball found a home in a meta deck, I'm positive Neo Upper Energy can find a home in, an, in a meta deck as well, because Neo Upper Energy is definitely better than Master Ball just as a Pokemon card, so I'm confident Neo Upper Energy will get there eventually. Man, if this card doesn't outdo Master Ball, that would be kind of sad, to be honest. Like, imagine being an A spec card that couldn't do better, or couldn't be played in more meta decks than Master Ball, or have more success than Master Ball. That'd be kind of a sad life as an A spec card, I'm not gonna lie. But that's gonna do it for my set review 
and buy list let me know what you guys thought about this type of video i did it for the last set y'all seem to really really enjoy it i tried to go a little bit further in depth with this one and we'll try to we'll try and expand on it more in my future breakdowns of uh, set review plus buy list video um and this one like specifically tried to mention the basic pokemon why i would pick up ones from this set or not and then the best one to actually pick up for the evolution you're trying to evolve into and why i would still pick up some of them from this set as well like the beldum like yeah matang is going to be around after the good beldum rotates so you're going to want the current beldum from this set as well a lot to go alongside it let me know what you guys thought in the comment section down below did i miss any major cards you think i should have talked about or did i talk about something i shouldn't have talked about is there anything that i should have put on my buy list or shouldn't be on my buy list let me know in the comment section down below and i'll catch y'all in the next video peace